Hey Legends, Blake here with another video and today I'm joined by Darren from Southern Discus and we're going to tour his place here and we're also going to go and check out his massive hatchery that he's setting up to. So I think this should be a really exciting video. There'll be heaps of information about, um, you know, be, well first of all there'll be heaps of discus. I'm really excited so thanks for inviting me here today yeah, Darren and uh, I'm excited to talk fish. There's absolutely mountains of discus in here <laughs> to look at. So we better get started, I think. Um, all right, so these are some of the grow out tanks here. All grow out tanks of different ages, different sizes. We max and, mix and match mainly because of room issues at the moment. So there might be different colors in tanks, but like a lot of people, we can pick them out as they get a bit older. Yep. Then put in their own colors. Ages vary. So, so say these little guys here, for example, how how old were they? Uh, they're probably about one and a half months old. Okay, awesome, awesome. Probably around you know, six weeks old. And, the, and okay, so then it gets progressively older the further back we get, is that right? Um, no, not in, not in any particular order, to be honest. Okay, It's sure. just wherever we take fish <laughs> from to move into our other facility. And that just makes a spare tank and we actually move fry into those tanks to grow out to the next size. How re how regularly are these guys getting fed? Like, do, uh, do, see, there's quite a bit, maybe they're twice the size of these. Do they get fed the same amount of time? Pretty times, much or? we feed them five or six times a day. Jeez. I did see a big jug of uh, brine shrimp when I got here, so. Yes, we, we do hatch a lot of brine shrimp every yeah. day. Is that is that pretty much primary primary diet, right? Uh, no, we do feed uh, from probably about four weeks up. We feed them um, brine shrimp, uh, dry pellet, and also our own beef heart mixture. Nice. Can you maybe let us know a bit about what got you into the hobby? What got you crazy about discus? And, um, and wow. how do you get to this point? Well, craziness, <laughs> a little bit of silliness wrapped up in that. Uh, no, I, like everybody else, started with a fish tank at home. Had something to do with fish my whole life, thanks to my mother. Yep. She's always had a fish tank in the house, so it sort of stemmed from that a little bit. Nice. And as I said, started with one fish tank at home, led to 10 fish tanks at home, led to a fish room with over 100 fish tanks in it, extended into a factory, turned it into a, a little bit of a business. When you did have 100 fish tanks on the go, purely as a hobby, what was was it a hundred discus tanks? Or? Pretty much. Yep. It was. Yep. Okay. So it always been it's always been discus. It's always been Yep. It's always been a discus tank. Yeah, well I guess I guess the possibilities never end with discus and um, you know, maybe even as we're talking, I'll be showing some of the stock so you can see like just the patterns, the colours, it's it's all Yeah, they're all different. All okay. Every every yeah. discus has got a different pattern, so these guys are really stunning here. Are they a bit more of a wild type? No, they're a blue rim red cover. Yeah, I love uh, that. Female ha actually has more color than the males for some reason. Yeah. Normally in the discus or in the aquarium world, it's the opposite way around. The male normally has more color than the female. But the nice, okay. the nice red one you can see right there, that's the actual female. So that one there's female and the male. And they're really hard to kind of sex out, aren't they? Unless you see one making eggs. Um, pretty much, yes. <laughs> there are some telltale signs, but it's never really a hundred percent. I do have females that show male traits, so we kind of wait till they lay eggs. Yeah. One lay <laughs> eggs, one doesn't. Sure, sure. And then I noticed the DIY. Uh, nothing wrong. In here. Nothing wrong with the DIY cone. Always like that. So, do you like rough up the PVC or anything nope. like that? No, nope. just that's just. Straight. Find if it roughs up, you can get a bacteria growth in it that the actual fish cannot clean out. Okay. So when they lay eggs, that bacteria can affect the eggs. Good to know, good to know. Because I definitely would have done that. <laughs> no, they actually, the eggs stick quite well. They, they lay on glass. It sticks okay. to the glass. The glass is a smooth, shiny surface. So yeah. I uh, can't see that a smooth, shiny pipe would be any different. Yeah, fair enough. And so these guys here, do they have some babies around here? Uh, unfortunately, no. Not yet. Not I yet. do have a pair of the same line that do. Yep. They're probably about 18 months to two years old. Yep. So we're, they're just in a holding pattern here until we can get some more breeding tanks put in. Sure. Okay. 
to go back a step, I probably should have said, how many tanks are in, in, in this room? Do you know? I don't know, to be honest. That's a, that's a good we fish have, keeper. We, we have three rooms here. There could be upwards of uh, 150. Yep. Give or take. And and head, head count on how many discus in here, do you reckon? Couple. <laughs> At least two. Uh, probably up into the thousands. I would say well and truly, yeah. There's, <laughs> there's discus as far as the eye can see, really. Do you have any considerations on like how many fish you put in each tank or it's just kind of like whatever the batch happens, happens? Yeah, look, you sometimes we do, we get smaller batches, so we actually combine batches. But we do overload our tanks where that is a sort of a hatchery slash farm situation. Oh, yeah. But we do do a lot of water changes. These get water changes every two days. Yep. Uh, we do anything up between you know, 30 to 50% every two days in every tank. Yeah, wow. So yeah, no no wonder. I, I think it's fine, by the way, especially if you're doing that. But I just wanted to get an idea of like, is this kind of full capacity or would you consider more in there? No, or? look, we would probably put a few more in there. Yeah, if you, yeah. Once again, it just depends on the room and because we're with them all the time, we can do a water ch extra water change if needed. And then for example, like this amount, when they start to get bigger and bigger, then do you split it into a couple of tanks? Yeah, or? we would normally take them down to our other facility. Yeah. And yeah. then they go into big thousand litre tubs, which you will probably see after. Yeah, we'll check that out later on in the video once we head down there. So definitely stay tuned. Uh, in terms of the tanks, I know some of them have got these side drop filters. Uh, yes. Some have got sponge filters. Most breeding tanks we have have sponge filters. Yeah. I have tried other ways of doing it, but I seem to always go back to the humble old sponge filter. Yeah, sure. And that because babies might get sucked into the side drop? Yeah, or? I've had that. I have lost batches of babies that end up being sucked up into the side drops. Side drops are a drama to clean mm. a lot of the time, whereas sponge filters just so much easier for maintenance. Yep. But especially, I can see what you mean for breeding tanks because you really want like the least amount of any gunk or yeah. anything yeah. in there to create a fungusing issue. Like these, these guys are getting to quite a big size now. So are you keeping some of these for breeders? They're, or? they're our next. That's uh, about the fifth generation yep. of the spotted eruptions that we bred here. And these are probably around seven to eight months old. And so at about this size, they would start to pair off, wouldn't they? No. No, normally as a rule, any probably after 12 to 15 months, okay. you will start to see a little bit of mating behavior. Normally at around between 12 and 15 centimeters. Okay, sure. So in terms of taking the fry, you know, a lot of people, especially with discus, the babies t tend to eat the slime coat of the parents, but, um, You've obviously separated these ones from the parents. Is there any reason why? Do you have a preference one way or the other? Well, or? we actually take the eggs away from the parents, yep. hatch the eggs away, and then once the fry have hatched, we move them into these bowls. The fry have actually had no contact with their parents whatsoever, so the parents cannot transfer any parasites, mm. worms, or anything onto these fish. So these fish are actually completely void or clean of any parasites. Mm. And then we raise these fish to adults and then we pull our breeding stock out of them. So then the next generation of breeding stock is void or clean of any parasites, any worms. So all our stock actually in this room is all parasite free. Mm. And when we sell fish, we sell pretty much clean fish. Yeah. We'll he keep heading through the uh, discus uh, labyrinth here. So we've got some of the larger fish in here. Oh, I might have to get on a bit of an angle, but uh, yeah. For me personally, I tend to lean towards these kind of patternings like the turquoise, the snake, snake skins snake and that skins. sort of thing. Uh, I just reckon it's so crazy. I know, well, I know technically you wouldn't find one really out in the wild like that, but I just think- Not like that, no. <laughs> I just think the patterning's insane. So yeah. 
What, so about this size, what, what sort of feeding do they get? And uh, twice a day. Yeah. Once uh, discus is fully grown, they do not need a lot of food. Yep. Because it's just the waste, they produce more waste and they actually don't need it. Yep. So we do the, give them two small feedings a day, morning and night. And once again, they'll get their water change every second day, about 25 to 30%. Yeah. And I can see that there's no filtration in these, but it, I can see the tank there. So are all of these? These are all, all these tanks are on the one system. They're on a small re recirculation system. Yeah. If you want to wander down the end there, you will see the filter, which is all K1 media. Is there any mechanical filtration? Uh, mechanical is just the Dacron pad. Oh, yes, I see that. And under the Dacron pad, we do have filter socks. Yeah, okay, nice. And that Dacron pad gets changed out every day. Yeah, well, the tanks are yeah, crystal clear. Like, I just think the amount of water in the, all of these tanks in a system and all of the fish, that's doing a great job, that filter, because even the debris that I get like from my eight foot and all that is way more than uh, I, w I wouldn't go any other way now apart from a moving bed filtration system yeah uh, how long have you kept this before uh well i've commercially been doing it for coming up onto 20 years we breed discus for a reason it's the challenge i do like the fish yep and it's always something changes it's never the same there's always something new every day sure sure why not especially if you've got a room full of fish that look like this so these would be what, red melons, are they? Or? No, they're golden yellows. Golden yellows. Right. And the other two that look a bit different are the red cover blue rings. Ah, yep. That's what we saw yes. earlier over there. Okay, awesome. And is that a product of growing up as them together or just kind of by accident? No, maybe? that's just how it works out sometimes. <laughs> Fair enough. Do you have a favorite? Do you have a, a favorite type that you've got in here? I like the original bold blue turk. I started with a blue turk 20 yeah. years ago. Yeah. And I find I still kind of like a blue turk. Yeah, sure. Don't have too many at the moment, but I do like a blue turk. All of these fish in here are huge. Like, I don't think I've ever seen discus this big personally. So this size, they'd definitely be pairing up within the tank. And yeah. then what happens at that, at that stage? Say that you know, these two fish randomly pair up. But you probably wouldn't let that happen, would you? Because you uh, I think they already have paired up, actually. There's probably three or four pair in that tank. Right. Like if a, um, what are these guys called? Blue? Yeah, powder blue. We, we yeah. call them powder blues. They go by a lot of different names. Yeah, like if a powder blue decided to shack up with a leopard or whatever. Um, you're testing me here. Like what, what's well, that? Well, that's a red, uh, we call them a giant flora. Giant flora. Okay, so powder blue and giant flora decide that they're the best theory. mates. Oh, there you go. We we've got a couple. Well, that's that's a win because right, you would allow mate. that to happen. Yep. But do you ever just get the urge to just go? Ah, oh, let's just see what happens here. We're working towards that. Yeah. Yeah. So she. She's cleaned in the side of the tank by the looks of it. Yep. We might have eggs there right in the morning or something like that. Uh, probably an air or two. <laughs> and so would you make an effort to try and collect those or they're just a product of... Oh, look, sometimes we do if they did lay on this white pipe. Yeah. The male's having a good crack at the moment. We probably would. We did pull a cross pair of eggs out the other day just to see what they would throw. Yep. And as Blake was saying, it's kind of an experiment we don't do very often, but on the odd occasion we might just to see what they do throw. Yeah. I mean, it's good. Uh, it's very tempting to do that, but... Well, it's... it is. It's every fish keeper's dream <laughs> to breed something different, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. But um, at, le at least, you know, having that um, having that uh, restraint, you know, you get nice pure lines, which I guess... Well, is you a... do, but then again, once you do get a pure line, it will throw something different in the, through the generations. Mm. Hidden genes and all that. True. This little fella in here, is that just a runt or is it a random? Ah, uh, just one we forgot to take out at some stage. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay, good. Because I, I often get that. Like I'll I'll buy like five discus and just one will just not not grow. Yeah, sometimes you get them that they're not as an aggressive feeder. They're a bit shy, so they don't get enough feed in them. Yeah. 
that's not so much the genetics of the fish. Other people might say it is, but it's not. They're just not as aggressive as at the food as others. Yeah. They miss out. Because I and then I just I I get into my head that oh there must be some kind of internal issue. Deworm them, deworm them, doesn't well, seem to do anything. these fish are worm free, so... Oh, can't these be, are, yeah, the more... Well, can't, they, that kind of disproved your theory. <laughs> that's true, that's... Well, that one, that one's from a different batch though, isn't yeah, it? So, yeah, yeah, that one was probably just left in there. Yeah, yeah, but uh, anyway, I, and, uh, and then it's a, that obviously might not have a worming issue, so then it just seems to sort of fade off into existence yep. and that pretty much sums up my discus keeping. I will one day, one day, mark my words, I'll, I'll actually get a discus to this bigger. Might be able to help you with one that. One day, maybe. I need to just bother you every day. That's all right. <laughs> all right, so this one actually, I'm just uh, yep. sticky beacon here. We've got some actual dates on this one. So 3rd of December, 30th of December, 30th of November. Okay, so three batches in here. That's that's a good amount, isn't it? That's probably like uh, 100 Yeah, fish, that's probably about the amount you should have in a tank, in a four foot tank, 220 yeah. litre tank. I know a lot of people always go on about um, stunting in discus and all that, and everyone's really scared to put a discus in a small uh, tanks. But um, if you are, consider that what you said before, all of these fish have grown up in this fish room, right? And then if you look over here, there's probably like 4,000 discus on, on the screen right now in, what are they, 30 cubes? Roughly, yeah. Don't hold me to that. So obviously these ones are also on a link system. We've got yep. the K1 down there. So there is a large water volume, but what are your thoughts on, on sort of the stunting and discus and and how, how long would they stay in a tank like this? Uh, we try and hold them in there for about a month. Yep. And then we'll move them into the three foot tanks, which are about 150 litres, I think. Yep. And then from there, they, as I said, they go down to the other place. Yeah, sure. Because but, I think like when they're young, there's probably benefit, you know, they don't have to swim as far to the food. No, well, they're not swimming a fast distance to find food. Yeah. And it works that way for every other fish. So and, I just as you, as you can see, they're all in each tank. They're all roughly the same size. Yeah, yeah. there's no real big ones, no real small ones. So they're all, they're all kind of growing evenly. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. If you did notice like a big, a couple of big units, yeah, appearing out of here, would you then move them? We would move then move them out and give the smaller ones a chance. Okay, well that's that's good. That's good to know. So. Yeah, because I, I personally agree with that. I, I've always thought that people are overly scared about stunting and, and all that. You definitely do come across some stunted discus every now and then. Not here, but um, but I don't think it's just from having them in a small tank for five minutes. Not at all, no. <laughs> keep don't, heading around. Don't trip over the pipe. Oh, there's a this this place just keeps on going. I've noticed there's even a room back here. <laughs> You'll never get rid of me. So here we have a pair. Spotted eruptions. Spotted eruptions. They're looking nice with their breeding dress on as well, nice and dark. And uh, you've left the babies in with these guys. So is that kind of by accident and then they're great parents or how, how no, does that happen? these are the young fish that we've brought up parasite free. Yep. Oh and, yeah. And yeah. now we will let them do their own thing. That makes sense. That makes sense. So you, you always separate at least the first few generations or the first few batches of a new fish that's been yep. brought in. Yep. Okay, that's great. Great to know. And actually, we're getting uh, all of the cross sections of what people do see. So left the babies in there. Over here, we've got maybe some parents that might eat their eggs. So we've got a cage on there. Well, as a business decision, we cover all our eggs. Yep. We can't sell an egg that gets eaten. <laughs> that's a good point. Stunning pair again. These are those ye yellow. They're golden yellows. Golden yellows. What would these guys be called? Blue. They're spotted leopards. Spotted leopards. I like them as well. I like the sort of blue coverage. Yeah. Especially of this guy here. We do have them starting to show rings now, which we're trying to line breed them to get the ring leopard. Yep. All right. Do you want to talk a little bit about line breeding? I 
Um, so uh, your, your sister is also in, in on this operation? Uh, yes, it's a small family operated business. Yeah, and um, she was telling us earlier that you had a, a story about red. Yes, our, we've got a batch of golden yellows brought over from a farm in Malaysia. And we were lucky enough they threw our blue rim red covers that actually come out of golden yellows. So not these ones in particular? No, they're grandparents. Yeah, so their grandparents through, which you get, you know, anytime you're doing a line breeding sort of operation, they threw those guys. And now, as a result, you got two different types yep. of discus that you can work with the line, refine them and all, yep. all of that. Um, so that that part of it as well is, I feel like it's a really cool thing. You can get a bit mad scientist with, with all Certainly that stuff. Certainly can. So you've got this pair down here and they're two different types of no it. brother um same line ah. just the males are a browner color they don't show color like the female for some yeah. reason so like before the and females actually the more they're color. all the same yes interesting that's cool that's cool yeah you can come into here these are just breeding stock you just don't put your hands anywhere all right because these are all imported stock these are all imported from malaysia all except right except that pair up there that's so, okay so these sweet bread. these are like the new the new ones, are they? Yep. And has anything in this room had fry yet? Yep, they're all the, the ones in, you've seen in the bowls before. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. That, they come from this room here. Awesome. They're leopards, are they? Uh, no, they're a um, red panda. Red panda. There's so many names. Aren't there? there is, it's confusing. <laughs> I'm glad rough. it's not just me then. Don't ask me to pronounce the whole name. I like them. I like them all, to be honest. Like it, that is obviously quite different to that, but I just like them. Yeah, they're a beautiful fish. No, I wish, I wish you, they didn't have to be kept so hot. Personally, <laughs> they don't have to be anywhere from 26, 27. These are only in about twenty-seven. Yeah, up to I don't like going over twenty-nine, thirty. Okay, does that does it change depending on their age? Do you find? No, or? always the same. Really? We, don't, we okay. don't change a thing. We don't raise the temperature. Yep. The rooms are heated. They're heated roughly the same temperature all year round. I love the red color on this. That's yeah, it. they're red diamonds. Make a paint that color. That's, that's beautiful. Is that the female there, the yep. dark one? Yep. Yeah, again, the female's got the most color. All right, and then I guess maybe before we head over to the other facility, unless you got anything else you'd be like, Pointing out. No, I think you've covered most of it. I tried to. There's just so much in the, in the room, and it's a bit like, here's a discus, here's a discus, here's a discus. But they all deserve some form of uh, some form of airtime. They're all a healthy little fish. Hundred percent. So very quickly, you'll get a pair like is in that room in there. Then the cone will come here, hatch out. Do you put methylene blue in or not? There's a bit um, of blue. Yeah, there, methylene yeah. blue. Yeah, but not very much by the no, looks of it. I think there's about four drops. Yep. And then from here, they'll either, they'll go into the fry sort of grow out, then into a 30 cube. Yep. And then from there into the three footers, into a footers, three foot free. tank. And then eventually. Stay tuned. Yeah, eventually over to where we're headed. So let's, let's go there. take a look. Head down that way. All right. So, and this is kind of like, the last place that they go before they're ready to yes, yep. hit hit the shops. Yep. Um, yeah, so how many fish do you think on a really good day might be in this room? Not today, but when it's all said and done. When this is all set up and run, there could be anywhere up to about 20,000. Yeah, I'd, I'd believe it too. Um, of all different, all different sizes, anywhere from five to six centimetre up to around 20, 22 centimetres. Yeah. And in terms of the decisions to go with IBCs, um, you know, back when we were at your place earlier, um, there was tanks everywhere. So what, what influenced that decision? Well, volume of water because a thousand litre fish tank is a lot to clean. Yeah. A lot of glass to clean. Yeah. It takes up a lot more space. Where with IBCs, I can run a lot more volume in water. Yeah. Which equals more fish 
an obvious downside is that it, it's a bit harder to monitor them very closely, but by the, is, time, yeah. by the time they get to this point, you'd imagine that. Yes, well, they will go from IBCs to fish tanks, yeah. and then fish tanks into bags to sharks. Ah, uh, okay, okay, so that we'll, makes sense. We will be catching, they're only, they're grown in these, yeah. more, more volume of water, so they do grow a little bit quicker. Right. And less cleaning, of course, because mm. water and everything is all automatic. Yeah, yeah. Skip forward a year or however long. Hopefully it might a take. couple of months. <laughs> what what does this place look like and um, what's the plan? There'll be thirty thousand litre IBCs or tanks in three ten in three rows. One row pretty much finished here, which is about to be connected into a recirculation system. Then there'll be another two roads exactly the same with another complete separate research system. 30 four foot fish tanks on that wall running on the same system. So all the fish are linked together. So they're all, always in the same water for shipping purposes. Yep. There's six tanks running on the same system. So in the end, we're probably looking around between 50 to 60,000 liters. Awesome. Just in this facility alone. You were showing me earlier, there's the really interesting um, filtration system that we've got going on here. So you can see there's overflow boxes on all of these IBCs. So all of them eventually will be linked. That they're, they're not running right now, but that will all go into this filter at the end, yep. which is really, here's the second one here for the other side. But I think it's just fascinating. I've never seen something like this before. So you better talk us through it, Darren, because I. I don't know. I've never seen one of these in my life before. So, well, this is a chamber. We call it a swirl separator. The water comes in here by a gravity, flows through here, and does a whirlpool. A very slow circle. The heavies, the real heavies, actually drop to the bottom of the cylinder here. This white miniature K1 will actually rise with the water and cover all these holes. So. It, then it will catch all the lighter debris. Yep. And then the water goes through this chute, comes out the bottom, and then comes into all the K1 that's circulating through here. Okay, so there's more, there's gonna be more K1 yes. in there. We'll okay. I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, sure. And then what happens, the water goes through these slots into this chamber here, which then comes out to a pump and then flows through the rest of the system. Awesome. So, yeah, basically, this will be all of the biological filtration for the room. And then from that, it goes out through into a sand into filter. Into a sand filter. Like what people might see on their pool or, you know, some of the other YouTubers out there have done that, like um, King of DIY and all of that. So yep. um, that will form the mechanical filtration. Yep. And then you get nice, fresh, clean water in all of these IBCs and tanks. So yeah, there's one running over there, maybe we'll have a little bit of a look. Okay, so here's the one that is currently running. But yeah, so water comes in there, swirls all yep, around. Swirls around here. Yep. Goes through the K1 here, the yep. miniature K1 into the cylinder. Then comes out through the bottom of the cylinder into the K1 chamber. Yep. Which is doing its thing. Then comes through into this chamber. Yep. Out the bottom, through the pipe, to the onga pump there. Yep. And then from the pump into the sand filter. It is connected. We can either run it through a UV if we like, mm -hmm. if anything happens, which it normally doesn't here. And then from the UV or just straight out of the sand filter, up through the pipe, back into the inlet. Perfect. Now I love that setup. It's, you know, a couple of different things that are a bit uncommon, but really they're just giant sized things that people might use, like yep. a giant this bubble um, thing yep, and a kind of a giant sponge filter if you will. Pretty much. It's, <laughs> full of, it's actually full of glass beads. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Awesome. And then if we have a little bit of a look finally into these IBCs, you can see there's heaps and heaps of little discus in there. Or well, not not so little. They'd probably be what, five centimeters? Or? Uh, no, they're probably about three, three and a half. Three and a half. It's, it's hard to tell because of the depth on them, but um, how do you go about catching them out once they're in here? Uh, we have a couple of apparatuses, we'll call them. <laughs> we have our a net, and we have a another net that we corral them with. All right, we'll find a tank that's got a couple of fish in it, 
Um, we'll come over here to these bigger ones. All right. You'll get, and we'll show you a couple of seven centimetre fish. And we'll pull the sponge filter out. I do think this is important for anybody that has ever considered, you know, growing out fish in an IBC. <laughs> Sometimes it's, it's easy a drama. To chuck them in and then it's hard to. Uh... All right, we swirl them around like that. Yep. We lock that into place. Then we we get a net over here. Sorry, we name all our things. <laughs> this is a net. And there's all our fish. Beautiful. And then these are some of these are goldens, golden yellows. That's a little eruption. Beautiful. And so those, these guys would be very quick, very soon heading off to a wholesaler. Aren't they? Yes, they certainly are. We're actually holding them for somebody. Okay, sure. There's a little, I can grab him. Little checkerboard. Beautiful. These fish are probably around four or five months old. These are one of my favorite, which is a young galaxy. Fantastic. And so do you still do the Five times daily feeding into these? Yep, these are five or six every day. Beautiful, yep. Two or three water changes a week. We do probably 25% water change. Every oh, time I we do water guy. change. He's like fluoro orange. Golden yellow. Fantastic. These are going to a supplier in Queensland over the next couple of weeks. You'll probably see this video and shoot me. <laughs> yeah, well. You did say you were holding them for him, now you're just literally, literally holding them for him. <laughs> all right. Awesome. Thanks so much for that. No, yeah, that's all right. We can, I'll show you a couple of bigger ones here in, in a second. Once again, these are all parasite free fish. Yeah, so all of these fish, their entire life, they've only been in your other room that we were in yep. before. And they've never touched water that, and a fish from outside your nope, room has not ever all, touched. No. Yeah. We keep our sort of strict sort of quarantine sort of to do that. Yeah. Not a lot of people actually get to come into these places. <laughs> I'll catch you the next size up if I can. Beautiful. And so these IBCs, they kind of, they contain fish of a certain size, not so much like yellow no, in no, here, eruptions no, in here, no. et cetera, et cetera. We'd have to have a million tanks yeah. to have each color. You must ha you must keep track, do you, or, or, of how much, because like if a wholesaler calls up and they're like, I want 20 eruptions, yep. then of nine centimeters, then you would have to come through net in there and check if you've got 20, eruptions oh, in look, that we roughly centimeter. know what we have yeah we roughly know we have these little lists here oh yeah uh, okay of, of actually what goes in yep and what date they go in yeah so okay. we actually know what colors in each tank that's good oh, okay that makes sense yeah. so medium size yep. those five fish and you can sort of go oh, yeah, yeah we can look in here and say yeah they're kind of close to size so we'll yeah, okay. take a few out of there okay that makes sense yeah all right that's that's interesting yeah Good one. Little things we learn along the way. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, you can see this, you, you're not short of discus between these two uh, facilities, that's for sure. And so yeah, those guys are again about that sort of four centimeters. So, yeah, yep. some are a little bit bigger. A lot of yellows in that. In we there. normally go through them on the day we're bagging up and we pull the bigger ones out. Yeah. And leave the smaller ones behind. Yeah, and then so, as you said, these row of IBCs will soon be set up back to back with these. Yep. And then there'll be tanks along there just for that real extra layer. Like you can visually then see them right before they're about to yep. go. Yeah. And we'll be able to catch and bag it straight into fish tanks. Awesome. Um, the facility is still under construction. Yeah. Everybody can probably still see. <laughs> no, I think you've done really well and I'm excited to see it see it um progress over time and uh, so am i yeah starting as a hobbyist like you've you've definitely deep dove on on discus and yep. 
And, uh, you know, I think it's an impressive level of dedication to the species. So, yeah, appreciate that. And, and um, thanks again for having me today. Nah, not a problem at all, Blake. All right, so thanks, Darren, for a really fun day. Uh, I had an absolute ball exploring all, everything. I've learned more about discus than I ever thought there was to know. Um, and that's just the start, I think, today. So um, appreciate your time a lot. And, and um, it's really impressive that this operation is going on in Melbourne as well. So um, I think we both agree. Anytime you can, make sure you support local and, um, you know, make sure that your local fish store is bringing in Southern Discus Center <laughs> discus if they yep. can. Um, so yeah, thanks a lot. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, it always helps me out to smash like, hit subscribe and all that fun stuff. If you like these kind of videos, drop it down below and I'll try and do more. Or we'll come back and check it out when it's all done. So um, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.